गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक सो द सीरीज विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग विच वी आर विटनेसिंग इट इज मेडिवल इंडिया इन दिस सीरीज यस्टर्डे वी हैड डिस्कस अबाउट अ वेरी ग्रेट पर्सनैलिटी दैट इज शेर शाह सूरी एंड टूडे ऑल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू विटनेस अनदर ग्रेट पर्सनैलिटी ये पर्सनैलिटी आज जो हम देखने जा रहे हैं वो ऐसी है कि जिसने इंडिया में और एक पावरफुल एम्पायर का फाउंडेशन किया था सो एज वी वर डिस्कसिंग दैट फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ द मेडिवल इंडिया मेडिवल इंडिया का जो फर्स्ट हाफ था उसको दिल्ली सल्तनत ने कवर किया था या उस फर्स्ट हाफ की हिस्ट्री दिल्ली सल्तनत की हिस्ट्री होती है सिमिलरली यस्टरडे ऑल्सो एज आई मैंशन द सेकेंड हाफ ऑफ अवर मेडिवल इंडिया और मेडिवल इंडियन हिस्ट्री इज कवर्ड बाय और ऑक्यूपाइड बाय द मुगल एम्पायर द ग्रेट मुगल एम्पायर एज इट इज नोन एंड द फाउंडेशन ऑफ दिस ग्रेट मुगल एम्पायर एज यू कैन सी वॉज लीड बाय अनदर ग्रेट पर्सन जस्ट लाइक शेर शाहरी ही वॉज ऑल्सो अ ग्रेट पर्सन एंड हीज नेम इज बाबर फेमसली इज कॉल्ड द बाबर द वेरी फाउंडर ऑफ मुगल एम्पायर एंड द बाबर बेसिकली His original name is Zahiruddin Muhammad. Okay, Babar का जो असली नाम जो है वो Zahiruddin Muhammad है. लेकिन वो उनके title Babar से ही famous हो गए पूरे India में भी और पूरे दुनिया में भी. और जैसे हम अभी देख रहे हैं कि Babar Mughal Empire के founder जरूर है, but हमें पहले ध्यान में क्या रखना है कि originally Babar India से नहीं थे. Babar जो आज का उज़्बेकिस्तान है. Okay. आज जो उज्बेकिस्तान नाम का जो कंट्री है जो आपका सेंट्रल एशिया में आता है जैसे आप अफगानिस्तान के नॉर्थ में जाओगे तो आपको मिलेगा उज्बेकिस्तान तो उस उज्बेकिस्तान और उस उज्बेकिस्तान में एक एरिया है रीजन है फरगाना जैसे हमारे इंडिया में अगर हम बोल सकते कि बंगाल है एक रीजन है या स्टेट है वैसे उज्बेकिस्तान में एक रीजन है फर तो उस फरगाना नाम के रीजन में बेसिकली बाबर का जन्म हुआ था बाबर बेसिकली वॉज बॉर्न एट फरगाना एंड उजबेकिस्तान एंड देन एट अ वेरी यंग एज इन 1494 एट अ वेरी यंग एज एंड हिज एज वेरीज फ्रॉम 12 टू 14 अकॉर्डिंग टू सम एस्टिमेट्स ही वॉज 12 ईयर ओल्ड अकॉर्डिंग टू सम एस्टिमेट्स ही वॉज 14 ईयर ओल्ड बट वॉट एवर मे बी द एज डेफिनेटली एट अ वेरी टीन एज स्टेज बाबर बिकेम द रूलर एज फर एज द प्रिंसिपलिटी ऑफ फरगाना वॉज कंसर्न जो फरगाना का छोटा किंगडम था जिसको पहले बाबर के फादर रूल कर रहे थे उमर शेख मिर्जा बाबर के फादर का नाम क्या है उमर शेख मिर्जा तो बाबर बहुत छोटे थे मतलब भाई ये बारह से चौदह साल के थे उस समय उनके फादर की डेथ हो गई थी और फिर फोर्टीन नाइन्टी फोर में बाबर बेसिकली फरगाना के रूलर बने थे फोर्टीन नाइन्टी फोर में क्या है बाबर फर काना के रूलर बनते और बाबर जब रूलर रूलर बने तो डेफिनेटली हम देखेंगे कि बाबर के लिए चीज़ें आसान नहीं होने वाली थी ये बहुत ही छोटी उम्र के थे जाहिर सी बात थी कि उनके जो कजिन्स वगैरह थे एंड बाकी रिलेटिव्स जो है वो बेसिकली बाबर को उस थ्रोन से निकाल के खुद वो थ्रोन हथियाना चाहते थे द कजिन्स एंड अदर रिलेशन ऑफ द बाबर they wanted to throw away babar from the throne and they wanted to dethrone the babar and then they wanted to have the state to the throne uh, among themselves so this was a case and if you see the babar's ancestry then we will find babar was a descendant of amir taimur on his father's side right on his father's side babar was a descendant of amir taimur very amir taimur who at one stage had invaded india and definitely amir taimur's name was not taken positively in india because uh, he had committed atrocities violence okay? he had looted india especially delhi so the memories of amir taimur even the babar came almost 250 years after amir taimur still that memories were uh, very strong in the minds of indians 
and the generation of the Indians. So Babar basically belonged to uh, Amir Temur's side uh, with regards to his paternal ancestry. If you come to his maternal ancestry, अगर mother के side से अगर बात करते हैं, तो Babar और एक great जो हमारे warrior थे, world history में अगर देखते हैं, या conqueror थे, या invader थे, जिनका नाम चंगेज खां, ये नाम आपने बहुत पहले से ही सुना होगा, ठीक? बचपन से ये नाम सुनते हैं सब लोग। चंगेज खान जो है, उनसे भी बाबर related थे, अपनी mother के side से। So from maternal side Babar was related with Chinggis Khan, the great Chinggis Khan, who at one stage, even before Amir Temur, Chinggis Khan had conquered the whole of Europe and Asia except India. India को वो conquer नहीं कर पाए थे, बाकी ये सारा Europe और Asia उन्हें conquer किया था Chinggis Khan ने. And Chinggis Khan कौन थे? Chinggis Khan मंगोल थे. अगर बात करें race की, तो Chinggis Khan was a Mongol. Okay? And if you take the race of Amir Taimur, then Taimur was a Turk. Taimur belonged to Turkish race. And Chinggis Khan belonged to Mongol race. And in fact, when we say Mughals, so why the Mughals are called as a Mughals? Because right from Babar, who is the founder of the Mughal Empire, he took the name of his mother's side, the matrilineal dominance was visible among the Mughals, okay? except for throne and the succession to the throne, you will see matrilineal dominance was very very visible among the Mughals and that's why since Chinggis Khan belonged to or belonged to we can say the Mongol race, so the corrupt form of Mongol became Mughal, okay? the corrupt form of Mongol became Mughal and the another variation of the Mughal became Mughal another variation of Mughal became the Mughal. This point we have to keep in mind. Okay. But the point is that despite the fact that the Mughal Empire basically is known due to the racial ancestry of Chinggis Khan, that is the Mongol race, still the Babar and all Mughal emperors, they used to take a pride in their father's or paternal ancestry. Babar and all his descendants they used to take a pride in their father's or paternal ancestry so since amir taimur he was a turk eh? since amir taimur he was turk so they used to refer their own dynasty as a taimurite dynasty eh? uh, even though it is also called as mughal dynasty but from perspective of a throne and a political affairs the mughal dynasty was always referred to as a taimurite dynasty and all Mughal emperors, especially the great Mughal emperors, okay, they used to take the pride in the house of Taimurite. Okay, this point we have to keep in mind. So, this means that we will see the overview of this overview. This means that in the Mughal Empire, we will see that the matrilineal dominance was necessary, but it was under the patriarchal framework. Okay? The matrilineal dominance was there, but it was in the framework of or uh, under the framework of patriarchal uh, framework. Okay, framework patriarchal aapko milega. So, as we are discussing about the very background and uh, rise of a Babar, okay, so we will see that since he Babar, Babar was always threatened by his cousins, and Babar was a very teenage boy, okay, so Zahir se baat hai, the cousins who were more experienced the cousins and the relations who had more resources, okay, they consistently troubled the Babar. And despite the fact Babar fought with them bravely, in such a small age, when we play cricket, at that time Babar had to fight with his cousins. Ke saath fight kar rahe but ultimately Babar's uh, relations, they overcame him. And that's why Babar lost his ancestral homeland. That's why Babar lost his kingdom and his ancestral homeland. So this made Babar, this made Babar to look towards India. फिर Babar को उसके पास ज़्यादा कुछ option नहीं था, तो अभी उसको ध्यान में देना था कि India के ऊपर वो कैसे focus कर सकता है। कहीं न कहीं तो उसको अपना सिक्का जमाना था। Somewhere he had to establish himself. So now he decided that first he will come in Afghanistan, and he tried to conquer Kabul, 
between 1504 to 1524 babar basically he was uh, having the control of kabul okay and when he was having the control of kabul then we will see in india something different was happening okay? in india something different was happening <coughs> as we discuss delhi sultanate was witnessing its own end okay? delhi sultanate was about to end now and at this point of view or at this point of time okay the last dynasty of the delhi sultanate known as lodhi dynasty abhi kya hai uh, 1517 se leke 1526 ke aas pass okay? lodhi dynasty jo hai jo delhi sultanate ki last dynasty thi uske ek sultan india mein rule kar rahe the uske ek sultan india mein rule kar rahe the unka naam tha ibrahim lodhi unka naam kya tha ibrahim lodhi and ibrahim lodhi basically uh, jo hai he was very young sultan hai eh? babar se bade the lekin phir bhi wo bhi 23 saal ke hi the zyada umar nahi thi and he was also lacking in experience ibrahim lodhi he was also lacking in experience and ibrahim lodhi had a problem he was short tempered and he would not respect his seniors okay both within military and civilian offices he failed to respect his senior nobles so at that time when babar was in afghanistan as a part of delhi sultanate punjab was a part of delhi sultanate and punjab was one of the provinces so in punjab especially at lahore there was one powerful noble of ibrahim lodi eh? who was posted as a governor who was posted as a governor and his name was daulat khan lodi tick his name was daulat khan lodi unka naam kya tha daulat khan lodi and in fact daulat khan lodi tick he was maternal he is supposed to be the maternal uncle of ibrahim lodi but still ibrahim lodi had disrespected uh, daulat khan lodi and eh? still ibrahim lodi had disrespected daulat khan lodi and that's why daulat khan lodi he was discontented or he was having some kind of grudge against ibrahim lodi and out of this grudge and personal rivalry daulat khan lodi now invited babar to invade india दौलत खान लोधी ने क्या बोला कि आप आइए और इंडिया के ऊपर अटैक करिए यहाँ जो सुल्तान है वो सही नहीं है आप उसको हरा के इंडिया को कौन कर कर सकते हैं ठीक और फिर बाबर ने कंटिन्यूसली इंडिया के ऊपर अटैक करना शुरू किया देन बाबर बेसिकली बिटवीन 1519 टू 1523 ही स्टार्टेड अटैकिंग इंडिया एंड डेन यू विल सी आफ्टर हिज कंसिस्टेंट अटैक्स ऑन इंडिया बाबर गॉट द आइडिया अबाउट इंडिया एंड इंडियन पावर्स and then babar decided to finally take over the sultan ibrahim lodi okay? the last sultan of lodi dynasty and also the last sultan of delhi sultanate and then we will see on a fateful day of april 21st 1526 okay 21 april 1526 on this fateful day babar defeated ibrahim lodi in a first battle of panipat in the first battle of panipat babar defeated ibrahim lodi and then quickly he occupied delhi the capital of delhi sultanate for ibrahim lodi okay so actually ibrahim lodi uh, he used to rule from agra agra was capital of the lodi dynasty but still uh, delhi was also very important okay? delhi was also serving as a alternate capital so delhi was occupied by the babar and here we will see ibrahim lodi was supposedly having 1 lakh soldiers and his army was supposed to be superior hai eh? ibrahim lodi ki jo army hai wo bahut hi zyada superior thi aisa mana jata hai okay and babar had only 12000 active soldiers babar had only 12000 active soldiers so it was completely a mismatch uh, battle for a fight still you will see babar was able to win the 
battle and not only he defeated ibrahim lodi he also killed ibrahim lodi right? babar also killed ibrahim lodi and you will be surprised to know that ibrahim lodi is the only ruler of delhi who has been killed in a battlefield okay beat a king beat a sultan beat a badsha right? ibrahim lodi becomes the only ruler of delhi in its recorded history okay, to have been killed on a battlefield this point we have to keep in mind so why basically babar was able to win or babar was able to get a victory over ibrahim lodi okay ibrahim lodi ke forces 1 lakh hai babar ke sirf 12000 mane gaye the aisa kya tha ki babar ne uh, a victory pa li thi ibrahim lodi ke upar so it was due to बाबर्स सुपीरियर मिलिट्री स्ट्रैटेजी बाबर की जो मिलिट्री स्ट्रैटेजी थी वो बहुत ही ज़्यादा सुपीरियर थी बाबर हैड मार्शल्ड हिज रिसोर्सेज वेरी वेल वॉट एवर लिमिटेड रिसोर्सेज ही हैड बाबर वॉज एबल टू मार्शल देम एक्सीलेंटली एंड वन थिंग विच इब्राहिम लोदी वॉज नॉट हैविंग दैट वॉज द यूज ऑफ ओटोमन और रूमी स्टाइल ऑफ आर्टिलरी Ibrahim Lodi was having artillery but it was a traditional artillery hmm, which was heavy and non mobile right? Ibrahim Lodi ke paas jo artillery ya tof khana tha it was heavy and non mobile right? non moving artillery but Babar was having we can say the Ottoman ya Turkish style of artillery right? so it is called rumi artillery and it was a mobile artillery okay babar was having small guns which were mobile and by using them on a different we can say platform okay? sometimes the guns can be carried by humans which were called narnal okay sometimes on mounting upon the guns uh, on elephant okay? you can uh, just uh, throw the cannons so they were called gajnal जो गन्स को एलिफेंट के ऊपर बैठ के मारेंगे उसको बोलेंगे गजनाल जो खुद ह्यूमन्स कैरी करेंगे और मारेंगे उसको नरनाल कहते थे और जो कैमल जो होता है ठीक ऊंट होता है ऊंट तो उसको पर्शियन में कहते हैं शुत्तर उसको पर्शियन में क्या कहते हैं शुत्तर तो कैमल के ऊपर बैठ के अगर मारेंगे गन को तो उसको शुत्तर नाल कहते थे तो ये मोबाइल गन की जो स्ट्रैटेजी थी उसकी वजह से बाबर को विक्ट्री मिली थी इब्राहिम लोदी के खिलाफ and once ibrahim lodi was killed then babar announced himself as a emperor of hindustan babar was crowned at agra ne jo agra jo abhi lodi's ka capital tha ye delhi sultanate ka capital tha main capital ne delhi ek secondary capital ki tarah tha main capital agra tha to wahan pe agra mein babar ne khud ko crown kiya tha as a emperor of hindustan and then you will see what is the significance of this battle ne? what is the significance of this battle The significance of the battle is that the Lodi dynasty and the Delhi Sultanate came to an end, and the first battle of Panipat laid the foundations of Mughal Empire in India, the Great Mughal Empire in India, okay, which was going to rule India for the next uh, almost three hundred years or so, right, or more than three hundred three hundred years, and especially the first six Mughal emperors, they are known as Great Mughals. first six mughal emperors they are known as great mughals and this tradition was started by babar okay so we have babar then humayun then the great akbar then we have the jahangir then shah jahan and finally aurangzeb okay so these six mughal emperors one after another they strengthened the whole of empire and provided peace and security or internal stability to the whole india or hindustan this point we have to keep in mind so this is a significance as per as the battle of panipat is concerned that is first battle of panipat but that doesn't mean that babar was immediately able to rule india right after the first battle of panipat there were still the problems which babar was going to face बाबर को और प्रॉब्लम्स को फेस करना था और चैलेंजेस रास्ते में आने वाले थे 
so as we saw babar was invited to invade india by daulat khan lodhi but along with daulat khan lodhi there was one more indian ruler who had invited babar to invade india and his name was rana sangram singh his name was a great rajput warrior rana sangram singh rana sangram singh who he is he was a ruler of the mewar at that time he was a ruler of mewar rajput princely state and he is a father a grandfather of maharana pratap yeah? rana sangram singh he is a grandfather of maharana pratap yeah? because everyone knows who is maharana pratap yeah? isme ke bare mein bhi hum aage dekhenge to ye cheez thi to ek great rajput warrior the okay to fir bhi unhone ek bahar ke aadmi ko बाबर जैसे फॉरेनर को इंडिया के ऊपर अटैक करने के लिए क्यों बुलाया सो राणा संग्राम सिंह बेसिकली ही वॉन्टेड दैट द फॉरन इन्वेडर लाइक बाबर ही शुड कम एंड फाइट विथ द सुल्तान इब्राहिम लोधी एंड वेन बोथ विल फाइट वन इज गोइंग टू विन वन इज गोइंग टू लूज बट वन हु विल विन द बैटर दैट पार्टी और दैट पावर ऑल्सो विल गेट वीक एंड जो हारेगा वो तो मरेगा ही लेकिन जो जीतेगा वो भी तो वीक होगा ये बैटल में तो सबका ही लॉस होता ही है ठीक जीतने वाले का भी लॉस तो होता ही है उनकी भी आर्मी मरती है उनके भी आर्मी को इंजरीज पहुंचती है उनके भी रिसोर्सेस आपके डिस्ट्रॉय होते हैं ऐसा नहीं है सो जाहिर सी बात है तो जो भी कोई जीत जीतेगा वो भी थोड़ा वीक हो ही जाएगा एंड देन आई विल अटैक देन आई विल अटैक अपॉन द पावर विच हैज वन द बैटल तो यहाँ पर हम वही देखेंगे कि एक बार बाबर ने इब्राहिम लोधी को मार दिया सो ये राणा संग्राम सिंह ही डिसाइडेड दैट ही विल नाउ टेक अपन बाबर बिकॉज बाबर मस्ट हैव वीकन बाबर वीक हुए होंगे तो उनको फिर से अपनी स्ट्रेंथ गेन करने का चांस नहीं देंगे वी विल नॉट अलाउ द बाबर टू रीगेन हिज स्ट्रेंथ एंड विदाउट गिविंग एनी चांस एंड टाइम वी विल डिफिट द बाबर एंड देन वी कैन बेसिकली Take or we can basically control Delhi and Agra region by ourselves. That was a plan which Rana Sangram Singh was having. And Sangram Singh also had one more objective. He wanted to take upon Babur because he wanted to prevent another foreign invasion or a repression, okay, upon India. India, फिर से कोई एक foreign invasion या repression face ना करे, ये भी focus था आपके Rana Sangram Singh का. तो उनका ऑब्जेक्टिव बहुत बढ़िया था बट स्टिल यू विल सी दैट बाबर अगेन वाज एबल टू गेन द विक्ट्री ओवर संग्राम सिंह संग्राम सिंह वाज अ ग्रेट वॉरियर एंड ही वाज द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज फॉर द बाबर इन इंडिया एट दैट टाइम संग्राम सिंह वाज द ओनली रूलर हु वाज हु कैन बी कॉल्ड एज अ माइटी रूलर हु कैन बी कॉल्ड एज अ माइटी रूलर एंड बाबर वॉज एबल टू डिफीट दिस माइटी रूलर दैट इज संग्राम सिंह Okay, and why Babur was able to win this battle again? Same tactics which were used by him in a first battle of Panipat. Okay, so again he effectively applied the Rumi or a Turkish method of warfare, okay? Rumi guns or artillery, uh, which were used by Ottoman Empire. उस समय जो Turkey में empire था उसका नाम था Ottoman Empire. तो इसी की वजह से basically Babur फिर से जीत गए थे क्योंकि किसी भी Indian powers के पास, including Sangram Singh. Uh, no one had the answer for this rumi or ottoman guns no one had a answer for this rumi or so called ottoman guns this point we have to keep in mind then once sangram singh was uh, destroyed and once babar killed him then babar took the title of gazi sangram singh ko marne ke baad kya babar ne gazi ka title liya tha this point we have to keep in mind Okay. and then we will see even though sangram singh was killed okay, then we will see even though sangram singh was killed okay still what you will see despite the fact that sangram singh was killed still we will find there was another rajput ruler okay, there was another rajput ruler who was ready to take up on babar okay. aur ek rajput ruler tha wo babar ke sath fight karne ke liye ready tha and he used to rule from chanderi in madhya pradesh he used to rule from 
Chanderi in Madhya Pradesh. His name was Medini Rai. His name was Medini Rai. Okay. So Babar also defeated him in 1528. In 1526, Babar defeated Ibrahim Lodi in a first battle of Panipat. In 1527, Babar defeated uh, 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 Rana Sangram Singh in a battle of Khanwa. And in 1528, Babar defeated okay, Medina Rai, the ruler of Chandari, okay, in a battle of Chandari, as we can see. Then in 1529, Babar basically fought against the Afghans of Bihar and Bengal. Okay? Those Afghans in Bihar and Bengal okay, who were planning to take upon Babar. Babar fought with them on the banks of river Ghagra. Okay? Ghagra river ke uh, uh, par, uh, banks ke upar ye battle hua tha. The Ghagra river which flows from near Patna. Okay? So here the battle took place and again Babar defeated them. <laughs> again we will see Babar defeated them. Okay? And after this battle, you will see the Babar was now able to bring a very large portion of North India under this control. Yeah? After this last battle, you will see Babar was able to bring a very large portion of North India under his control. And then finally, you will see on a de December 26, 1530, after the consistent warfare, yeah? both in India and his homeland, Fargana, right from the age of 12 or 14. Babar was fighting. Okay. So now due to consistent warfare, the warfare took the toll of his body. Okay. Continuous war karne ke se, uski body ke upar wo, uh, stress aaya tha. Okay. Body uski thak chuki thi. Okay. And Babar was not, uh, uh, we can say, was very old as you can see. He was nearly 50 years of age. Okay. Jada age nahi tha but still due to that consistent warfare, Babar ultimately died at Agra. Okay? So Babar could not visit his homeland. Babar died in India at Agra. And Babar's body was first buried or laid at a, one of the famous gardens in Agra known as Aram Bagh. Okay? Babar ki basically jo body hai, wo shuruat mein kaha laid ki gai thi, ya bari ki gai thi, Aram Bagh. Since he was going to rest permanently, the garden is called Aram Bagh. Okay? And this garden was laid by the Babar himself. This garden was led by Babar himself. But Babar had a wish that since he could not visit his homeland, so Babar had a wish that when I will die, I should be buried as close as possible to the homeland. I should be buried as close as possible to the homeland. That's why you will see <coughs> Babar's body was taken from Agra and it was basically buried later at Kabul and later the Babar was buried at Kabul. At Kabul also Babar had built one famous garden known as Bag e Babar and Kabul also Babar had built one famous garden known as Bag e Babar. In this Bag e Babar, Babar was finally laid to rest and finally permanently Babar was buried at Bag e Babar in Kabul as per his own wish. Now last we will see what is the estimate of Babar. Babar kis tariqe insaan the. So we will see. Despite being a great warrior and a statesman, Babar is a great warrior thai, and he is also said to be a great statesman and consistently he was fighting the wars. So he had very little time for uh, pleasure and leisurely activities. Still you will see. Babar used to read a lot. Babar was a very literate person. Babar was a literate person. He was very good at reading. He was a scholar of Arabic and Persian. He was very good at And he was a scholar of Arabic and Persian. Babar's mother tongue was Chagh Thai Turkey. Since Babar belonged to Turkish race, as we saw, his mother tongue was Chagh Thai Turkey. His mother tongue was Chagh Thai Turkey. In this mother tongue, in his mother tongue or in Chaktai Turkey, Babar wrote a book. In his mother tongue, that is Chaktai Turkey, Babar wrote a book. A book in the sense, his famous autobiography. Babar wrote his famous autobiography known as Tuzuk e Babari. 
in his very mother tongue babar wrote his famous autobiography tuzuk e babari okay and in his tuzuk e babari you will see babar gives the details of physical features flora and fauna of north india okay because babar was fond of nature babar ko nature bahut prasan tha okay he used to love flora and fauna okay? different trees plants different animals unme wo interest lete the theek hai and he used to observe all the physical features so especially about north india the north indian plains rivers himalayas okay and different climates in different areas everything has been ma- mentioned by the babar in detail in his autobiography that is tuzuk e babari theek hai later this tuzuk e babari was translated into persian language later his autobiography that is tuzuk e babari it was translated into persian language by a famous poet by a famous poet whose name is abdul rahim khan e khanan right by a famous poet whose name is abdul rahim khan e khanan and he this famous poet basically uh, was under akbar right? abdul rahim khan e khanan he was in the court of akbar so this crucial point we have to keep in mind and then you will see as we saw babar was first buried at arambagh after his death then he was taken to kabul and buried at bagh e babar so babar himself being fond of nature in the love with nature right? he also used to like gardens babar was also in love with gardens right? he had a very uh, very keen aesthetic sense right? babar had a very keen aesthetic sense about nature and that's why he introduced a concept of beautiful gardens known as mughal gardens right? in india and these gardens were laid in a special technique known as char bagh technique right? these gardens were laid in india in a special technique known as char bagh technique and char bagh technique me kya hota hai that garden will be uh, in a square shape okay it will be divided into four equal squares all squares will meet at a center at a intersection point and a beautiful water fountain will uh, basically flow as far as the center is concerned and today also some of the babar's gardens are still existing like as we can see aram bagh in agra bagh e babar in kabul eh? but especially the nishad bagh of the kashmir on the banks of dal lake where so many of the body, bollywood movies have been shot bahut sari bollywood movies ka shooting jahan pe hota hai nishad bagh that was beautifully laid by babar which is still existing and finally we can see they say babar ko interest the uh, scholarly activities mein okay literature and poetry all the things babar was interested similarly babar was also interested in painting okay? similarly babar was also interested in painting and you will find there were two persian painters who became famous under babar दो पर्शियन पेंटर्स थे जो बाबर के अंडर बहुत फेमस हुए थे फर्स्ट इज बिहजाद फर्स्ट इज बिहजाद पहले का नाम क्या है बिहजाद एंड सेकंड इज परवेज सेकंड वन इज परवेज ठीक फर्स्ट इज बिहजाद एंड सेकंड वन इज परवेज सो इन दैट फैशन यू विल सी बाबर वॉज अ ब्रिलियंट पर्सनैलिटी अ ग्रेट वॉरियर अ ग्रेट स्टेट्स मैन ठीक अ वेरी लिबरल पर्सन एंड देन द पर्सन हु वॉज इंटरेस्टेड इन art gardens okay and other kind of cultural activities such a person basically ultimately laid the foundation of a great empire and his great successors continued to strengthen the empire and uh, give a flourishing uh, strength to india as well as they basically increase or enhance the glory of india so that we will see in our next classes so today uh, for this class babar we have seen and definitely i am sure just like share shashuri you must have enjoyed about babar also okay and from exam perspective all important details i have mentioned okay and definitely you will be able to uh, re- recall recollect and understand the things in a very easy way so on this note i would like to end this session okay again we will meet in a further sessions till then goodbye thank you